Welcome back to a weekly vlog. I must say you have exquisite taste in YouTube videos. I'm very happy that you're here. This week, I'm going to take you along on the journey of going back to London. And it is a whole journey just to do the journey. If you're a new friend here, I split my year between my house here in Florida and London where my boyfriend lives. We both split our, our year between the two places. He actually was so cute. He just updated his website to say based in the US and the UK. And he was very excited about it. Anyway, we love splitting our time. We feel like we get the best of both worlds. We get a big home here and a much slower pace of life, a much more peaceful pace of life. But then we also get the culture and the excitement and the global hub of London. Definitely best of both worlds. We're really excited about it. But I go back for at minimum four weeks at a time. I think this week, I'll, this time I'll be there for like six weeks. It's Sunday right now and I head back on Tuesday. So we're a couple days away. I will take you along showing what it's like wrapping things up at work. Obviously I continue to work when I'm in the UK, but there are certain things that I can only do here. So I, it requires a lot of planning, but it, splitting your time between two places and making sure that projects and important things at work continue to happen. So I'll show you what that looks like, especially on Monday, we're wrapping up a lot of exciting things. Another factor in taking along the journey of getting ready to go back to London is Tom and I come back here to the US 10 days before Christmas. And so I really wanted to have like Christmas decorations up in this house because London is the Christmas capital of the world. No one does Christmas like London. So when we come back 10 days before Christmas, back here to the US, I want the like exciting Christmas festivities to still be going strong. And a lot of my Christmas decor is kind of like London themed. Speaking of, I am using a London Christmas mug. I love it, it's really cute. And I'll show you some of my other decor. I already put up my Christmas tree, which you might be able to see behind me. I spent yesterday getting it up it's like flocked so it's a whole mess but it was nice spending saturday afternoon getting the christmas tree up putting some ornaments on it and today i'll take you along on putting the kind of finishing details around the house getting it ready for uh, christmas time when we get back lastly i haven't even started doing anything resembling packing which is of course a journey especially being in the uk during like autumn winter when it's cold i need to figure that out the clothes get thicker and the suitcases don't get bigger. So there's my dilemma. But for right now, let's dive into this relaxing Sunday. I just finished doing a live on Instagram and I talked all about determining what your superpower is. But I did wanna share some of what I talked about on the live here with you since you are here. First, I started by sharing that I really feel my superpower is my confidence. I do things before I'm good at them. I do things before I'm ready. I do things, I do things even when I'm nervous because I want the end goal or the end result more than I'm afraid of, of trying something new. Even with these vlogs, I know I'm not like the best YouTuber out there, but that's just not my goal. And what I love about superpowers is that when you know your superpower, you can move with so much more purpose. And no matter what you do, whether you create content on the internet or you work at Walmart or you have a hair salon or you're an entrepreneur, no matter what it is, you can do things with purpose. You can do things in a way that adds value to other people's lives because you know what you can do in a way that maybe most other people can't. Some other examples of superpowers of women that I know is I have this one friend and she is so extremely sweet. She is so kind. She's so like loving and warm and compassionate. And at the same time, she is so fierce for what she believes is right and wrong. And so she's the only person on this planet that I've met who holds both of those things that are seemingly on two different ends of the spectrum so, so well. I have another friend who just cries at everything. Like she just feels everything good things, bad things, happy things, sad things. She just is so emotionally connected to everything. I feel like I'm missing out on like a layer of life. Like there's a layer of life that I'm not tapped into because I'm not crying at everything. Another example of a superpower is I have a friend who has so much capacity for fun. Like I don't really think I'm a fun person. I'm, I'm kind of a serious person, but this friend of mine has such so much energy for fun. She has such a high capacity for fun and that betters the people around her because she pulls people into having more fun with her. And what I found is, is that superpowers are usually the thing that other people don't relate to about you. Like maybe it's something that you feel like is weird about you, or maybe it's something that you feel like you need to try to fix or get better at or change. 
And I think that's just because society tells us we really need to be one way and fit into one box to be successful or to be kind or to be thoughtful or to be happy. And that's just not the case. So if there's something about you that you feel like just makes you stick out like a sore thumb or a lot of other people can't relate to, or maybe people have told you that you're wrong, like I can't even tell you how many people like I know just want me to like sit down and shut up. And I'm just kind of like, no, I need, to, I need to share what I know is true with the world and I need to go before I'm ready and do things before I'm ready and show other women what's possible. And knowing your superpower might not give you like one clear cut path, like this is your single most productive career route that you should go through. But I think it does help you narrow down what to do with your life or narrow down the long list of things that you want to try or want to pursue. At the very least, it will help you do a job that feels menial or unimportant with so much purpose and feel like you're actually contributing and making a difference in the world. Like when you know yourself more, your confidence rises. So we're all in relationships with ourselves and you know, in any relationship, the relationships you neglect dissolve, they deteriorate and the relationships you focus on thrive. Some people neglect the relationship that they have with themselves. So knowing your superpower is like knowing something that's really important about you. If you are having a hard time coming up with your superpower, I encourage you to ask someone who knows you. I mean, my mom told me what my superpower was and it really resonated with me. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you're right. And now everything I've done since that moment has been to help instill more confidence in other women. Even if they're confident women, I will compliment them or I will call out what I see that they're doing really well or what's really special about them. And I want them, when I leave them, I want them to have more confidence than when I, when I found them. So if you are having a hard time determining your superpower for yourself, ask someone. I know that they're gonna have an answer. days the tree is up our ornaments between tom and i are on the tree i'm just kind of in the season of just wanting like the fun quirky ornaments that make me happy and like represent things that we like about our life instead of having it look perfect which i feel like is a little off brand for me usually i'm all about the aesthetics i got those black snowflake pillows from target in the five dollar section and one of my toxic traits is that i feel like if it's in the five dollar one dollar section it's free but 10 bucks for both. So I really liked that because it's hard for me to find chic black and white like neutrals Christmas decor. I have this electric snow globe on my television console and I got it at Nordstrom like in 2018. It's just constant magic. I'm sure it's not sold anymore, but I know there's gotta be other stuff like that out there. And I have a little Santa in a phone booth, which is probably the cheesiest of my decorations. You can see what my house looks like without Christmas decor up in my home tour vlog number two, which I just posted. Highly recommend you go check that out. I posted it like a week ago and I link all of my home decor and furniture in that video. I hope you enjoy. about six weeks tomorrow in 24 hours and you've yet to put a single item in your suitcase. My flight to London takes off in 24 hours and I never do this. I never wait until the last minute. About a week before I leave, I open up my suitcase and I put it on the floor. And as I think of things that I need to bring, I put things in the suitcase and it just makes things so easy. Why didn't I do that this time? Anyway, here we are. I had an amazing one-on-one -on -one coaching call with a new client. Well, she's not a new client. We've actually had, we've worked together several times. It always means so much when clients hire me again, like over and over again to work with them and mentor them and coach them in their businesses. And we, she, for the first time though, she purchased a three month private coaching container with me. And this was our first call of the three months today. And that went really, really well. It was so fun. I believe in her and her business so much. She's just wanting a little bit more accountability and a little bit more support, overcoming things like imposter syndrome and just having some structure. Because as you know, when you're a business owner, you don't have structure <laughs> because you call the shots. One of the best parts about having your own business is the freedom but one of the hardest parts is just not having that accountability to do things that you know you wanna do. 
But work was amazing at the office, fin finished things like filming things, all of the kinds of projects that I can't do when I'm in London, got it done at our office here. And it was a really good full day. I was so exhausted that I came home and I watched the new Selena Gomez, My Mind and Me documentary. I have been internally crying uh, ever since. I do feel like so, it was really good. You should just watch it. But now I really need to pack because I will not let myself wake up tomorrow and still not be like at least 90% of the way packed. I actually have a lot of clothes in London that I keep there, particularly like coats and warmer stuff. And Tom already took some of my warmer clothes from the last time he was here. He left in October. And so he brought some stuff over for me. But not having access to all of your clothes in one place for me, throws me for a little bit of a spin. It is travel day. I have spent the morning, kind of had a slow morning because I didn't sleep well last night. And then I've been taking care of loose ends around the house, like took my coffee machine apart, made sure it was clean and nothing's gonna grow in there while I'm gone. Doing dishes, was bringing in the cushions from the terrace furniture inside, getting everything actually in my bags. And I was delusional thinking I could record a video for work today. I always think these little things is going to be like 10 minutes right before I leave and it ends up taking like a few hours most of the day before I actually go and travel. I am gonna leave Leave my home soon and then catch a 7 p.m. flight to Atlanta, which I love. I love the Atlanta airport, by the way. And then a 10 p.m. flight to London Heathrow. We'll see if I sleep in that middle seat. First, let's see. I'm going to remain optimistic. Let's see if I actually keep the middle seat. I'm kind of hoping that I'll be moved somewhere, but everything here is pretty much ready. I'm going to leave soon and head to the airport momentarily. I have been adjusting to the jet lag and then my first full day I was here Tom and I went to a concert a cigarettes con concert in Brixton and it was so so fun and then last night we made mold wine and watched the new season of the crown together I am coming to you live from Kensington Palace <laughs> I am in Hyde Park today my favorite place in the world I stopped at Jumo on my way in which is one of my favorite cafes just outside Hyde Park to get my oat chai I'm just so so happy I wanted to spend some time in Hyde Park today because it is as I said my favorite place in the world and then later I'm heading to lunch with one of my very first coaching and mentoring clients she was probably one of my first 10 clients when I started my coaching and mentoring business in 2020 and now she is here spending a semester here in London so we have a lot in common and we are just gonna grab some lunch today. It doesn't always happen, but I really, really love when my coaching and mentoring clients become friends of mine. I love hearing how people progress and achieve and evolve after our, our time together, our sessions together. I just love hearing the updates and then I love just staying in touch as friends as well. It really is such a like cherry on top of my business is just meeting and connecting with in absolutely incredible women uh, around the world actually. Thank you so much for coming along on this journey of me getting back to London. It feels so, so good to be here. And I just realized that this is my fourth year of going back and forth between the US and London and spending like a third of my year here. I cannot, I thought it was year three, but it's year four, which is absolutely insane. Just a little reminder for you, if you're coming to London soon, I have linked below my London guide this is where I have places like the Jumo Cafe and over a hundred more recommendations not only for food afternoon tea cafes but I also have like walking route suggestions and in the download there's a link that you can click and all of my recommendations will instantly go um, as a guide onto your either Apple Maps or your Google Maps app on your phone which is amazing because yes you could scour my Instagram highlights for suggestions but there's so much more in my guide and the fact that you can have it as like you can like chick click a box and then all of the options come up all of the places come up as pins on your phone 
is absolutely insane. I have them all on my phone. So if I'm like, okay, I'm meeting someone here, where should we go to lunch? I have my whole guide on there and I'm constantly adding to it. And every time you purchase a guide, if I ever make updates to it, you'll always get the update, updated version in your email. Thank you so much for coming back to London with me. I will be vlogging a little bit while I'm here. And so there'll be more London content to come. And then in a couple weeks, I'm going to Paris with my friend Kaylin. So that will be really fun as well. I cannot wait to take you along. Thank you for being here. I'll talk to you soon.